and then introduce us and then play the intro. Hey, you've got Daryl as a service, and we've got a group of people here that are really looking mm -hmm. forward to showing you Microsoft mm -hmm. Whiteboard. And play the intro. And you might have to turn the volume down, I think, uh, whoever's monitoring on there, but let's roll the intro. Excellent. Hey, this is Daryl as a service again. I'm going to get everyone to introduce, introduce themselves very quickly, but I, I have to make this wisecrack, guys. I do. I, I can see two people um, that I know very well, uh, two people that I've met um, just briefly on the internet, but but for some reason I can't see your face. Is this another version of the Microsoft background blur for Microsoft employees only? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's uh, it's a special feature that we've reserved for ourselves when we haven't had time to get our hair uh, in order, and so it's the crazy be. the crazy hair filter. What I like to say, Daryl, is you know that we're podcast guys, March and I, so you know we're audio first. That must be it. I mean, you've got all you've got all your your, your podcast better mics all plugged in, so uh, brilliant. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. <clears throat> Uh, so how about we get uh, the Microsoft peeps to introduce themselves, and then and then uh, people from the Regarding Three Six Five team. Go ahead, March. Sure. Uh, my name is March Rogers. I'm a design director working at Microsoft, and currently I'm helping to build a Microsoft Whiteboard product. And I'm Ian Mikatel. I'm a senior product manager at Microsoft on the Whiteboard team, and I work on a whole bunch of different areas, uh, many of which we'll actually demo and talk about today. So I'm really excited to be here with y'all. Great. And uh, Dan. Hello, I'm Daniel Glenn. I am a Microsoft MVP and a co-host to wonderful things going on regarding 365. And I'm looking forward to hearing um, what's what's this whiteboard all about. But uh, as well as what what are we you know what are we looking forward to? What are those things that are, are coming that you know gets get us all excited about uh, this product and how it can play in our digital workplace life? All right, and the lovely Louisa. The lovely Louisa. Hi, I'm Louisa Fraser. <laughs> And I'm your favorite sketch note artist. And uh, yes, I'm very curious uh, about uh, hearing about Microsoft Whiteboard and uh, looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. So months in the making. Um, we'll, we'll turn it over to, to the Microsoft people who will be sharing their screen and, and we'll talk through some of the Microsoft Whiteboard. Yeah, thanks very much, Daryl. Uh, so first off, I mean, it's worth spending just a couple of minutes on why make a whiteboard app, um, why we think it uh, complements the other uh, products that Microsoft offers, and also why we think it's useful for people. So, and you guys can see my screen, right, as I pan over in our product. Yes, we can. Let's, uh, yeah. let's spend a minute on why. So there's really three things that have been happening over the last few years that Microsoft as a whole has observed, and these are uh, changes in how people are working together um, and uh, how they're getting uh, their work done. And so there's really three big trends that we're starting to notice. The first one is increasing automation. We all know and have been hearing about that that AI is coming. In many ways, it's, it's already arriving. And it, what it's doing is it's starting to automate routine tasks. What this means is what we need the humans to be doing in the workplace of the future is the much more messy, creative, ambiguous, solve hard problems kind of work. Because the routine stuff is going to be taken care of by our computers. The second one is is that there's this ongoing trend away from people achieving the things they need to achieve uh, on their own to needing to work in teams to be able to achieve that. And so that achieving together, that that you and me need to collaborate together in order to achieve anything is becoming the norm. And then the third one is that teams are becoming increasingly global. And this is two aspects to it. One is they're geographically very spread out, just like we are, but they're also increasingly diverse in terms of cultural background and language. And so the the workplace of the future is going to need to accommodate people who are not physically together and who don't necessarily speak the same language or have the same cultural references. So these are three very large trends. And one of the, the things that uh, that came out of uh, this research that we did was that that combination of needing to work together uh, and that increasing automation means that you could sort of say that the job description of every job in the future is solve hard problems in small groups. And 
the way that people tend to do that, especially early on in the process when they're doing a lot of brainstorming, they're ideating, they're getting to know each other, they're putting things together, they're drafting the first versions of their project plans and their documents. They have a whole bunch of stakeholders they have to enroll. And we've seen these same behaviors that I just mentioned. It doesn't matter whether you're building the next airplane at Boeing, you're making the next Pixar movie at Disney, or whether you're uh, creating the curriculum for a nonprofit school in California. These are very normal human behaviors, this working together to solve hard problems. And what we observed was that people don't necessarily jump on their laptop or their phone when they're first starting to solve these problems. The tools that they tend to use to help themselves and each other are things like whiteboards, sticky notes, uh, messy desks covered in photographs and cutouts from magazines and, and, and you know, uh, quotes from books. They live in this very analog, real world because that's it's a messy place where they are in the project. They need the materials to be very loose and freeform. They don't really need to be firing open, um, you know, firing up Word or PowerPoint at that point and saying, okay, what font do I want to use? Uh, what picture am I going to use? They're not there yet, right? They will get there and those tools are going to be very powerful once they have a clear idea of what they're doing. But we saw an opportunity to create another product that would complement the existing products Microsoft makes that's really about that messy beginning stage. It's a, it's a tool for brainstorming in. It's a tool for generating ideas and coming together and bringing together things that inspire people and they can use as references before they're ready to create formal documents. Yeah, and a lot of times what you'll hear it called is the storming and forming stages, right? The really early beginnings of a project. Um, and the other thing I, I wanted to call out was these workplace trends. You see the, the giant rainbow arrow there that's asking why. Um, there's, a, there's also positive things we're seeing as to why this is happening. Um, so, for example, we've seen a lot of good research from academia and the workplace from other major companies around diverse groups and diverse groups are performing better. So it's actually helping you to have a more diverse group. Uh, the same thing with um, when we have uh, increased automation and also uh, collaboration. So teams that have more collaboration in them typically perform better and are more profitable. So there's basically reasons from the bottom up and the top down that a lot of companies are moving towards these trends. Well, and that's, um, if I may uh, jump in here, the um, two things that jumped out at me when you're just talking, one is that automation and working with groups that are global. Uh, so um, I'd like for you to maybe, and maybe you have a plan for this, sorry, but to talk about how we might work together as a global team regarding 365. We do that all the time, but we um, English is is our first languages. But how would you know groups that don't um, speak the same language? You know, is there any you know thought in how that works out? But second uh, point that I heard and that I totally agree with is this brainstorming. This and it's a little. It's more than brainstorming, right? It's, it's actually starting to formulate things. But instead of just writing in Word in an email or in a document or something, being able to craft what the vision is uh, in pictures and drawings, uh, so that the the actual um, effort, uh, the the thoughts are coming across that you know, and you're capturing those rather than later on going. I know you had a vision for this, but, you know, we didn't have a drawing. All we have are these words that you tried to describe it. Um, you know, having a, the whiteboard a, a application to be able to, you know, capture all the, all of the thoughts, not just words, uh, I guess I should say. Um, you know, I think yeah, that I, is key. I can jump in with a couple of things. I'm sure March has a lot more to add, too. I, I do a lot of conferences for the whiteboard product. And, and one of the things that strikes me that I say myself and a lot of people say is I'm a visual learner. Right. How often do you mm -hmm. hear people say that? And if you it's what's funny is if you look at a lot of the tools, not even just Microsoft, but across the board that people use from every company, most of them are not visual in nature. And if they are visual in nature, they presume that you're a designer or that you have some creative skill. And so one of the things that an analog whiteboard uh, does so well is it kind of levels the playing field, right? If you can walk up to a board and hold a marker, uh, you're in the game. You're able to get out the ideas from your head uh, in a visual way. And that visual way doesn't need to be an amazing artistic drawing, right? It just needs to be something that visually communicates your ideas. And so um, that's why the uh, digital version of a whiteboard is so powerful. 
Yeah, that's right. And um, just to add on to that, I, uh, one of the things that you can think about, especially if you're on a conference call with somebody, or even worse, if you're just sort of email emailing or chatting them, the uh, the risk of misunderstanding is very high, right? Because we you sort of think that the the bandwidth, right, the amount of information coming from the complex idea in your head. To, and you're hoping to get that a complex idea into somebody else's head, you're going through this very narrow channel of these words that we say. And so this visual communication tool, like Microsoft Whiteboard, uh, allows us to broaden that channel. It reduces misunderstandings. Uh, it increases the speed and the effectiveness of transferring your ideas. And to your uh, point, Dan, about global teams and maybe not necessarily sharing a first language, that becomes even more crucial to getting to that shared understanding is, is having that ability to really see uh, in real time what other people are thinking as they can express themselves, not just with their voice, but also with their hands. Well, and uh, I'll challenge you a little bit there. I think you're doing actually a little more than just, you know, it's not the next step after words, Right. Um, because you talked about, you know, email or phone, even mm -hmm. just phone, you're having a hard time communicating. And even over uh, video mm -hmm. or even in person, it can be tough to communicate when you say something and you know what that means to you. But when you're communicating with that person, it, it means something maybe slightly different and they right. get offended or so. So being able to not only do all of what you just said. So we're we're doing that today. We're doing video and um, but but then also be able to draw it out and say, no, th you know, this is what I said. This is what I mean. And, and be able to do that in, in picture as well, I think is is huge. It's, it's more than just that that initial, you know, next step. You, you didn't say that I'm putting words in your mouth, but, you know, it, it's it's definitely way more than just um, the words and writing. But, but it's way more than just video or in person as well. I, I you know, I think. Oh, it's yeah, so no. true. And just to, to, to uh, say another really common phrase, you know, people say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a lot of times, you know, people forget the picture is about the thing that you're talking about, right? It doesn't mean a picture of your face or a video of you talking because that doesn't help illustrate your idea any better. Um, the picture is of the concept. And so the whiteboard is literally the manifestation of your ideas come to life on a page, right? So anyway, uh, uh, love, absolutely. Love so uh, from my point of view, uh, so I experienced that uh, the drawings I do, uh, but not about being an artist, but it's only I call it functional drawing. It's uh, and I mm -hmm. think this uh, this meets totally uh, what the whiteboard is about. Uh, it, it means to grab a pen and bring an idea into that whiteboard, but not to be a Van Gogh or Picasso or Monet, so leave them in the, in the museum where they belong to, uh, but uh, to encourage courage and uh, yeah to democratize um, ideas and that's that's huge because uh we hear this all the time about you know i, I can't draw well that, yeah. that's not the point that you know mm -hmm. the point is to convey your message so exactly. do that how you do it and this is another medium to help you do that right yeah you know just, yeah, yeah. And there's a behavior that we observed in our research about how people relate to whiteboards that's different than how they relate to a lot of other uh, forms of communication or collaboration, which is it has this very lightweight, transitory, informal feel. And it basically says, you know, I, I, I see a thing where people are using whiteboards and I never see this with, you know, email or documents, which is, I think this is a really bad idea, but let me draw it anyway, and then we can make it better together, right? So it gives a sense of this psychological safety of I can, I don't have to have the right answer yet. I can be wrong. I can be uncertain, uh, and and you know that's sort of a uh, an equivalent of my handwriting's not good or I I I'm not a, I'm not good at drawing. Is it gives you this place where you can you're just going to sketch something out. The whole app should feel like. This is a very lightweight, easy place where making mistakes is not a problem. Um, it's just as easy to erase ink as it is to put it down. But everybody is on this equal playing field, as Ian said, of uh, sort of everyone's going to be messy and therefore you're allowed to be messy. And, and we haven't even touched on this last point and, and then maybe uh, March can t talk more through um, some of our uh, some demo scenarios. But a huge piece of, of the whiteboard product is all the creative visual stuff that we just talked about, but then adding on top this collaboration layer, 
right? So the fact that you can now not just visually communicate the ideas in your head, but you could have five of your coworkers doing the same thing at the same time on the same board is what takes it to the next level. Because now you're not just talking about your ideas and you're not just getting inspiration from yourself, but you're actually being inspired by the others at that moment. And it's that kind of, it just, it's like getting people together in a room, right? When you haven't seen somebody in a long time and it just feels different. It has a different essence to it. That's what the whiteboard feels like to people that are trying to creatively problem solve. It's like you're getting the gang back together. You're getting to get, you know, you're having those moments, that spark of inspiration that, that something new will happen because you're all at the same time. You're not sharing a file and then somebody's reviewing it by themselves. And then 10, you know, a couple hours later, you get a note back and it's, it's in that moment. And I think uh, to your point, as you're talking and Louisa is, is doing the drawing, we're seeing her, you know, her picture, her, um, um, profile picture showing up saying she, this is her doing this. I, I mean, that brings it to who's doing, oh, I, it's easy. And I love that. Um, and I, I attribute this uh, kind of in that same vein, although I think this is a little better, but the same vein of, you know, we're now able to do conversation in office documents, right? When you're mm -hmm. having and being able to collaborate sure. that way, yeah. it's it's kind of that same feel of what you just talked about. You got the gang together. You're all working on this application. You're co-authoring this application or this um, document. But here we are. We're we're co-authoring this idea, and we're doing it in different ways. We're, voice, we can do it in words, but we can also do it in picture. So um, I think that's brilliant. Okay, shall we uh, shall we jump into the product and do a couple of demos? Yeah, definitely. Okay, and we'll come back and visit this board and see what Louisa has been adding to it uh, <laughs> while we're we're off in other places. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to navigate back out to our gallery view where we can see all of the boards uh, that you have access to. So I'll tap the the little uh, back icon in the top left hand corner. And um, uh, March, when you first visit that, it, it usually takes you through to a a blank board, doesn't it? So you can just get straight into using the whiteboard. That's right. Yeah. And it's sort of similar, you know, that feeling when the, the difference between, oh, I have an idea I need to capture and I grab a pen and paper or I go to my laptop and I boot it and I log in and I load the application and I wait for it to load and I sign in and then I start <laughs> typing. Right. Like we wanted our experience to be much closer to the piece of paper than to the I have to you know open my laptop. Uh, and so you, we can't always, you know, control every variable of that. But as much as possible, we want our app to be instantaneous, capture your thoughts and ideas. Okay, so one of the things we talked about and is really common as a scenario today is brainstorming. So here I am, I'm opening uh, a board. This is just an example of a demo board. On each of these little demos, I made these little storyboards just to give you a sense of what is it about. So really the way to picture brainstorming uh, with our application is you have a place where everybody can share all their thoughts and ideas. Everybody can see and hear each other and that's either through Skype for Business or, or Microsoft Teams. And then over time, they can take those ideas, they can group them together, they can vote on those ideas, and then they can say, okay, what are our next steps? What's the next plan? Just like you would if you had a, a pile of sticky notes and a whiteboard. The, the main difference here is that, uh, one, you don't have to be in the room to collaborate, where today, if you want to do a brainstorming session, who are, either the people in other countries are excluded or they have to get on an airplane. And then the second thing is, is that afterwards, it's somebody's job to digitally transform all of the things. You know, how many times have you gotten a blurry photograph of a whiteboard or a photograph of a wall full of sticky notes? <laughs> and, and yeah. you know, it's your job to turn it into notes. I mean, it's kind, it's kind of impossible to do. And so by having a digital tool, everybody has access to it and you don't have to do that sort of extra note taking step. So in this case here, you know, I'm sort of stimulating it here a little bit. So there's a whole bunch of ideas that people captured. And you'll notice that some of these sticky notes have uh, have ink on them, which is uh, for people who have devices with pens, whether those are large screen devices or whether it's their laptop or an iPad Pro or a Surface device. Um, they can totally collaborate in a way that's very easy and natural for them. But also if you don't, if you have a just a, a regular phone or um, here you go. Thank you. Um, uh, either a regular phone or just a, a, a traditional mouse and keyboard uh, PC, you can still also collaborate. And so you can insert text and you can type uh, and you can contribute your ideas just as equally. And so again, this is this feeling of equality and egalitarianism about this surface. Again, you know, it's the way you feel when you walk into a room with a whiteboard in it. 
uh, it's not your whiteboard. It's not my whiteboard. It's just the whiteboard that we're using right now. So it doesn't have any of those sort of overhead of whose document is this, who owns it, what are the permissions, any of that sort of stuff. So in this case, I'm going to take a few of these notes um, and, uh, and I'm going to group them together so I can very easily uh, pick up one of these notes, which I will do. So I can tap and pick up this note and I can move it around. Whoops. Whoa. It's doing something a little funny. Sorry. Let me do that again. So I'm going to pick up one of these notes and you'll see that when I pick it up that it is, uh, it's just like uh, a, a little bit more physical in that respect. So you can see that it, you get a shadow uh, on the note. I'll actually go over here and, uh, and create a new one so you can see. So you can press and hold, you can insert a note. I I'm happen to be using a device with a keyboard, so it's offering that I could type, but I can also just ink directly on it. Uh, and this is my great idea. Um, and then I can pick it up and I can move that note around. I can make it bigger. I can rotate it. Uh, I can toss it around just like you would a physical note. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could I can make a second note. And let's say that this is a related idea. Um, and I can easily, let's say this is uh, this is my my other great idea. Uh, I've actually this used this to um, to create something of a a post-it note Kanban board for um, oh yeah working through streams of work. So it worked quite well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, actually, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later on. One of the things you can do, just to, you know, because this is another feature of physical post-it notes, and it can help to distinguish them, is that you can easily change the color. So I like pink as well, and so I can take this idea, and Ian's idea, which he's just made blue, and I can stack them together. And then I'm going to take uh, the the uh, move these out of the way. Take this idea that I had earlier. I'm going to drag that together, and so you can create these little stacks. And then you'll see I'll I'll just sort of flip through them. Um, and then these are just a little group of ideas that are related in some way. Um, and I can pick them up just, uh, just like I would any other object and move it around or in the case, cause I'm sharing my screen sometimes <laughs> the app crashed. So just one second. So one of the things that's really powerful about the stacks feature is this idea of grouping content. Um, in a really natural way, right? So he wasn't doing right-click menus and hitting group these objects and figuring out layers and, and, and grouping the ink to the object and all this stuff, right? Like we're taking that out of the way for the users because when you're in the brainstorming session, the last thing you want to have to do is deal with that sort of thing because it stops your flow. It stops your your idea that you have in the moment. And so one of the things that's really powerful about the whiteboard in general, and it speaks to that thing March said earlier around the kind of simplicity of it, when we did user testing of the very first versions of the whiteboard app, uh, we asked people in one word, describe this product. Like, what is it? How, how would you describe it? And it's funny because usually when you do that kind of a, a, a task or when you ask people to describe something, they will give you every kind of descriptive word in the book, like everything you could think of, right? So it's all over the place. And you have to go spend a bunch of time filtering and figuring out sentiment analysis and blah, blah, blah. What was funny with this case was to a T, people pretty much said the same thing when they looked at this app. They said it was simple, it was approachable, and it was not intimidating. And those all basically mean the same thing. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons for that, um, but that's a really good sign because it means that people are going to just get their ideas onto the canvas and not fiddle around with buttons and nav bars and menu settings and, and all that. That's right. And one of the, the nice things ahead. I like about you, you, the way you select objects and, and ink and icons is there's this really subtle shadow underneath that lets you know it's hovering above the board now. I've selected it and I can drag it around and place it wherever I want. That, that actually feels quite natural too. Yeah, and one other thing, uh, as well as sticky notes and capturing ideas, sometimes you just wanna, uh, you wanna express some idea um, uh, that is maybe you just wanna find a, an image off the internet to express your thought or build on it. Um, and so you can easily do that. And so one of the things that you can insert is uh, an image from Bing. Uh, and so in this case, I mean, I could type, uh, I have a pen in my hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, let's say, are, uh, are, we, uh, are we cat people or are we dog people? Who's, uh, how about you, Daryl? Are you a dog person or a cat person? Uh, look, we've got cats, so we'll, we'll stick with cats, but I like dogs too. All right. Okay. Let's just cats go with for the win. cats for the win. 
Yeah, I kept people. And so you can see there's there's some intelligence in the app that means that while you could do this very natural input method using using your pen, it still understands what you mean. It tells you what it thinks you means. And then and then when you search, uh, it can go ahead and find images of cats for you. And so, you know, we'll say that my idea was related to a cat. I was able to tap on that image. Um, and now just like the sticky notes, I can pick this up. I can move it around. Uh, I can scale it to different sizes if I want to. Um, and I can ink on top of it and so you can sort of mm. give hey, them a question give guys them a... is you're using bing search there and we yeah. know that microsoft search is coming um are you getting to together with the microsoft search people and allowing um enterprises or businesses to search their picture content from their bing yeah that's that's coming soon we don't have that capability yet but um and it we won't when we're able to deliver it, it won't be limited to images you'll be able to search and insert uh any content from your enterprise's cloud wow that's um, great yeah. i can yeah. i can also add to that so maybe i'll 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 wrap up this scenario by telling you a little bit about what you can imagine happening in the future for this scenario and how we're going to kind of invest more in this area so one of the things that Mark showed was the classic canonical brainstorm session. I don't know, Mark, if you want to zoom back out and show the, the sticky notes again. Um, but one of the things that is a big task when you have a lot of sticky notes, right? And you can imagine this when you post them on a, the people typically will post these all over a wall when you do them in a physical setting, right? One of the things that is the biggest pain is then going through and grouping them and organizing them by idea types or by color coding or whatever, right? Wouldn't it be amazing if in the future, a digital whiteboard app could just do that for you and save you a whole heck of a lot of time and let you focus more on problem solving and ideas and less on organization and routine tasks, right? So yeah. there's a small window into what we might do in the future, um, but there's going to be lots of areas where we can do things like that to help you focus more on ideation, creative problem solving, and less on the stuff that doesn't matter as much. Like it's just stuff that we can automate. So and just yeah, laying me, out the ideas maybe in a, um, yeah. uh, like a mind map style. That that certainly could be one way to do it, yeah. Hmm. And for, for, and I've gotten this question a few times, the, I think there's a place and, and there's, there's room in the, the space for um, applications that overlap in, in functionality a little bit. Um, so let's talk about, if, if we can, just for a little bit about how we can use so the Whiteboard app along with uh, also using, you know, apps like OneNote to uh, enhance our, you know, our digital life where we talked about the functionality or why we may use Whiteboard and, and I'm on board. Um, but how do we, um, what are scenarios where we may use either one? As far as you are concerned, you know, I, I, and I'll say this, we are in this place of let's use what works for you, for your organization, for your team, for your small group. You know, it may be different in all those scenarios, but, um, you know, th we've definitely seen some functionality here that is not available in OneNote. Uh, we've seen some that is. So uh, can we talk ab uh, just a little bit about, you know, um, why whiteboard uh, for certain scenarios, I guess, um, you know, I'll put it that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'll let Mark speak to the scenarios a little more deeply, but at a really high level, um, OneNote and whiteboard are actually sisters and, and brothers. Uh, we, we sit in the same organization in Microsoft. Uh, we have the same boss. <laughs> um, and, and we were actually, whiteboard was born out of OneNote. A lot of people don't know this story, but I tell it at conferences, which is when the Surface Hub originally launched, um, the first version of whiteboard was actually just a, a version of whiteboards, uh, of OneNote's canvas with some different UI sitting on top of it. Uh, we since then rewrote the whole thing from scratch, and we invested a lot in in the real time architecture that you're seeing with as March and I are collaborating on this board. Um, but there's there's this sort of origin history together, right? Where we're coming from the same place, this infinite canvas that can let your ideas flow out. The difference is you'll start to see, and it's early days, right? So that's why it is a little uh, the lines are a little blurry right now. But you're going to continue to see definition and, and it get clearer over time. Is that OneNote is totally all about organizing your life, right? And if you look at a whiteboard, it's it's a really right now it's about getting the ideas down. It's it's almost less about organization and more about idea output. 
Um, and so OneNote has amazing capabilities. Uh, March and I both used to work on the product to organize all of your thoughts in your notes and your meeting notes and have, you know, Outlook integration with your every meeting synced in OneNote and have class notebook integration for education, which we'll talk about a little bit later for Whiteboard 2. But um, so there's this notion of it being really your digital version of a notebook, whereas at the at the same time, it's the whiteboard is the digital manifestation of a whiteboard, right? So it, 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 if you want a really easy answer, if you're sitting here watching this YouTube video and you're like, Ian, that's confusing, what do you mean? Well, just think about all the times that you use an analog whiteboard and all the times you use an organized physical notebook, right? You have very dear, clear different times that you use those things and they make sense to you. And there's not, and, and the, the one other answer I'll give you is there's not a one size fits all answer, right? Like you just said. So everybody works a little differently. If you happen to not be a super visual person, you may not need all the functionality that you get out of a visual communication tool like this. Um, but if you're collaborative and you have to do that all the time, then you may. The other thing I'll say uh, beyond the superpower of OneNote being about organization is, you know, right now, if you look at our app, obviously we're very focused on making a great inking experience and, and giving you a great experience with pen. Um, and up until now, micro, uh, Microsoft really has only had like its flagship pen app has been OneNote. But I think what you'll find over time is that more and more of Microsoft's products are going to become really pen friendly and ink friendly. And this includes, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint all now support ink. Um, they'll be supporting more and more of those capabilities. And so it, you can start to think about that um, it w it'll be less about, oh, I have a pen, therefore I need to go to this app. And it'll be more about, okay, what am I trying to accomplish and what's the natural place to go? And then the other thing, which has always been a promise of Microsoft products, is they interoperate together. So there's no wrong answer to um, to where, let's say you wanted to start in OneNote and then you want to continue in Whiteboard, you'll be able to do that and vice versa. Um, actually, let me move on to the second scenario, which is uh, something that we commonly do together in groups, which is we want to outline a document. You know, we don't quite know what it is yet. Maybe it's a PowerPoint. I'm going to load one of these boards. Um, and really what we're going to do is capture all our thoughts. And again, this is where that visual collaboration becomes really important. Um, and then eventually we will we will formalize it into a more structured document like a PowerPoint presentation. So again, I have these three little, uh, let me see, I'll use my mouse cursor. Um, this little uh, thumbnails to indicate the story. So we have somebody here who's um, trying to create a PowerPoint deck. They've actually inserted a, um, a previous PowerPoint presentation, which they're using as reference, and they're starting to sketch out their ideas of a timeline and, and some dependencies that they're going to need to uh, express to their uh, partners. Uh, they have some questions they can't answer on their own, so they invite some collaborators, and you can see that they're all now working uh, on this board at the same time. And then ultimately they're able to take their ideas and start to structure them into a PowerPoint. So if I come out here, you can see sort of an example of, of me doing this. And so one, uh, right now, these are, these are a stack of images that I exported from PowerPoint to put into Whiteboard. We're in the process of uh, automating this as well to, to remove steps so that you'll be able to uh, quickly go and find a PowerPoint from your recently used uh, PowerPoints and just insert it directly onto the deck just like this. But you can see this is again, this is that same stack thing that you saw earlier. Uh, but apart from that as well, uh, you can you can expand it and see that as a, as a grid. And, um, and even let's say that there's one particular um, image that I want to reference, I can go ahead um, and pull that out. Um, and as I pull it out of the stack, it separates, and then I can go ahead and make it larger. And we could say, okay, this is the layout we want for slide four. Um, and then we could sketch out what that might be. Now, as we, as we start to outline the deck, and you can see Ian is there working away, um, we can sort of create these little templates here. And this is just a very simple outline template that sort of shows you the slide and then some notes about it. You can very quickly take some notes. We can see that Sarah was in her earlier and she said, don't forget to caveat the delayed payment. Uh, and we can keep working on that. Now, um, again, a lot of these capabilities currently exist to be able to interoperate between Whiteboard and other Office products. And really the work we're going to be doing in the next few months is about automating them. So let's, for example, say I have this diagram here. This is a classic. Uh, product creation diagram of plan, design, build, test, and then plan again. Let's say that I want to turn that into something um, that I'm going to use in a PowerPoint slide. So the first thing I can do is uh, I can select it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'll have the option to copy it, which I will do. And then I will go over to PowerPoint, which is right here. 
Um, and I can just paste it, just like in PowerPoint. I've switched over to using my mouse. Oh, nice. And, uh, and I can do that image. Now, this is actually ink. I could change the color. I could change the thickness. Uh, OneNote knows what it is. However, uh, the thing that I want to do is actually get a little bit more structured. And so I can go to here to the Draw tab, switch to Ink to Text. I can circle the ink like that, and it'll know what it is. And so you can see here that while there's a few steps involved in this right now, we'll be taking those steps out. But you can see how you can very easily, and then I can actually switch to Shape as well, um, I could take something from whiteboard and start to turn it into uh, something that is more uh, structured and more native to PowerPoint. Yeah, that's and that's reminiscent, I think, of um, you know that same kind of functionality that was in OneNote to be able to you know doing that uh, ink to text, bringing that functionality or having that functionality in PowerPoint, but then matching it with whiteboard. Um, I think is really nice uh, right. to be able to, because yeah. with PowerPoint, what we've been doing in the past, right, is if you copy and paste, it pastes as an image. That's um, right. And yep. you're stuck. And so you got to get it right before you get into PowerPoint. Uh, being able to do what you just did, m getting it in PowerPoint, but still being able to work with it uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and manipulate it rather than having to, like I said, get it right before you move it there. Um, I, I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, really one, like one of the things we want to avoid with ink in general is the 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 general thing people tell us, which is that, that they have they feel like they have to go rewrite everything or retype everything after they've written down their their notes with ink, um, and that's such a a loss of time, a loss of productivity, and it just it actually discourages people from using ink to begin with, and so um, that that's a major major thing that we're working on in the company. Um, from an interoperability standpoint, like March just showed, but also from just the the simple task of making you feel like ink is more powerful and you don't need to put down the pen all the time. The um, to on your point there about uh, you know applications working together, uh, two questions or thoughts. One is um, as far as the moving back and forth between like OneNote and uh, the whiteboard app uh, specifically. And there's others, right? We could talk about, but. Um, as far as those, I'd really like to see that experience um, be very fluid, be very easy to do, and then you know have a, a nice promo video of of here's how you do it, so that people understand that it's not um, about use this only for if you're a creative person, and then use OneNote if you're an organized person. No, right. we, we we need those people working together on teams. So um, you know having that ability to move back and forth uh, as we're trying to um, get to that goal, whatever that goal is, I think that would be that, that's my comment. Um, yeah. I mentioned Teams in that in that comment, uh, not the product, but the word. But I will mention the product. And the question is from the chat room was, um, you know, is there any kind of timeline that you can tell us about, you know, or or a target for getting into the Teams uh, canvas for Whiteboard? Yeah, I am the guy working on it uh, on our team. Um, it is coming soon. That's all I can legally say right now, or I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I will give a little Easter egg. If you looked real closely in the whiteboard's launch video, uh, you may see some Easter eggs in there if you look real close. So that's that's all I'll say. Um, but yes, we totally hear that feedback and we are definitely working on it. So uh, stay tuned on that front. Um, but for the sake of time, March, why don't you move on to the next the next board? Yeah, absolutely. So let's do that. So, so far we've talked about brainstorming, the natural way to input with your pen. Uh, you can have sticky notes, you can organize them, you can put together your to-do list. Then we moved on and we looked at um, uh, how you can use a tool like this to draft uh, the outline of a presentation or a document. And then even how you can start to uh, take that content into PowerPoint and make it more structured. So next, one of the things that, we, that co people commonly do uh, is they have what we, we here are calling steering meetings. This is basically anytime you have a meeting where it's like we're just trying to check how the project is uh, is going on time and on budget and if everybody's doing what we're doing. Generally speaking, maybe this is a, a board that you come back to over and over again. It has a list of all of your work items on it. You can assign people to them and then you could take those assignments and you could visualize it in another way like a Kanban board. So. This is something that, uh, that the app today um, does very lightly. So uh, it's it's very simple, very straightforward. I Here I just have a little sketch of what a Kanban board might look like, that you could use sticky notes or you could use ink and move things around. You can add things to this Kanban board. This is actually just a very simple table um, that we have the capability to create. 
uh, over time, we're going to make these more sophisticated and uh, eventually be able to actually connect it to things like Trello and Microsoft Planner so that this becomes a visualization of project management that you can then easily do in the whiteboard while still working in an environment that you're familiar with. So uh, to, to that idea here, we have a, just a set of uh, templates that, that we commonly use when we're using the whiteboard. And it's everything from calendars to business plans. Uh, this is one that Ian is very familiar with, which is a, what's called a SWOT analysis, which is a business planning tool, which is about really figuring out the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities of a, of a business. Now, one of the things that we know, there you go, that... Um, that people want to use these things with is that sometimes you might accidentally touch the image and pick it up. And really what you're trying to do is like write on top of that image or move sticky notes on top of that image. So we added the capability, if you can see in the little um, context menu at the top there, we added the ability to lock images to the background. Uh, and so when you do that, it just lets you know and it locks it. And now I can't pick it up, I can't move it. Um, the only thing that I'm moving is the canvas. And so that means that it's very easy for me to start writing on top of it. Um, and then I can easily, you know, pick up that ink and I can, uh, I can move it from one part of the board to another. And I don't run the risk of accidentally touching the template, which I'm really trying to use as a background. And so that means multiple people can be in here. They can be playing around. They can be putting sticky notes on it uh, all the time like that. And in the act of doing that, they don't, you know, disturb that underlying template. Did you okay. guys catch that lock capability, March? Do you want to just show that one more time? I think sure. that is so cool, and it is hot yeah. off the presses for us. It's a brand new thing. Um, yeah. So most people have not seen this in the app at all, but it has a little cool animation, and it's yeah. one of the top requested things we actually heard from users right now because they were trying to use pre-templatized content that they that is very specific to their business, right? So these are not your generic templates that you may see in other Office apps when you launch them. These are mm -hmm. like you can pull in a thing that's very specific to your business even, just mm -hmm. needs to be basically an image. And then lock it to the background, and you now have a templatized version in the whiteboard to do whatever you want with. That's right. So uh, I'll unlock this one again, so you can. In this, I was case, about to ask. <laughs> what, yeah, you what can, is the uh, process for unlocking? <laughs> so, so what you do is you you right click on the uh, on the image, and you'll see you, these are the normal things that you can insert. So it's still letting you insert as if it's not, but it gives you this extra icon here, this little unlock icon, and when you click on it it pops up off the surface and then you can move it around or I could scale it if I wanted to. Is like there an equivalent gesture if you're just working on a whiteboard with your fingers or the pen? Yeah, there is. And so uh, if you, let me do it again. Let me see. I'll take one of these other ones. So I'll, I'll take this, uh, this sort of target image. Doo -doo. And so you can see in the, uh, in the image context menu at the top there, you'll see there's always a lock icon. So you can lock any image, which means if you have a, a line of business template or a template that, that your company uses frequently, you can bring it into whiteboard um, and then you can use that and then you can you know, do this, which is you click on that little lock icon and it will pin it to the background. I could see, and this is not just business, this is you know, education. Uh, uh -huh. you know, bringing in, in, in templates for, um, you know, those, uh, uh, documents that you're, um, uh, trying to use to, to, you can think about graph paper, you can think about, I mean, just there, there's, it's kind of endless to mm -hmm. think about, you know, all of the things that you can bring in that you would want to do this. You want to lock it That's down right. so that I can write on it as if it was a piece of paper, um, uh, you know, rather than having it to, you know, doing weird stuff and manipulating. So I, I love that. Yeah, that's right. And and you can also do fun things like play darts. One of the things about this <laughs> app, and we take this as a very good sign, is that people spontaneously start playing little games. And part of it is the real-time nature of being able to ink and draw and share in the same space. But it's also just, it, it gives you a sense that, you know, yeah, this is a business app, but it doesn't have to be incredibly serious, right? You, if you want people to be creative, we need them to be able to feel loose and to be able to feel like they're at play. Um, if they're going to be able to come up with the great next idea for their company. So I think this um, is where uh, the a... um, OneNote, OneNote has, has not had that same real-time feel. So I think this is right. when you can see it actually happening and it's happening within milliseconds, um, that yeah. real-time nature is, is really um, making a change for this scenario. And when we, yeah. when, go ahead. When we want to ask for features... Uh, where do we go? And maybe we could talk about that in, but um, in the chat room asking about, mm -hmm. you know, changing thickness of the pens, for instance. Sure. So uh, where can yeah. we go to find out 
the roadmap or you know request features? Is that user voice or something else? It, maybe we can cover. Yeah, that. we have a yeah. we have a user voice uh, whiteboard dot user voice dot com. Uh, so head there. It will actually have it for all the major platforms we're on, which we'll talk about that at the end as well to recap. But yeah. this is not just a Windows app. We have released an iOS app, uh, and then we are uh, going to be working on an Android app. And so we'll be on all the major mobile platforms. And we have a web app in preview right now for commercial users. So if you're on an, a tenant, an org ID account, uh, you can log into uh, the whiteboard on the web for other platforms or devices that um, you want to get it on. Uh, one last other thing inside the app under our little settings button in the top right hand corner, you'll see that there's a send feedback option and that will open the feedback okay. hub on, on Windows and it'll also let you go to the store um, on okay. iOS and you can leave feedback there as well. So and either you're, and your you're, and you're receiving thing. you're receiving that feedback. Yeah, we actually have both. Right. Uh, we have it all hooked up to uh, mm -hmm. our the team's team that uh, that makes this happen. We have a special channel, so everybody on the team sees every piece of feedback that comes in, and we Wonderful. talk about it. Every, we talk about it every day. Wonderful. Okay, so let's finish right. our last scenario, which is all about education. I'm going to let yes. Ian take the lead on this one. This one is near and dear to my heart. Uh, so, like I said, I used to work on the OneNote team before, and I got heavily involved in the education market then. And it was just. It's, it's just to take a second. I mean, I tell this joke all the time that when you're building product for enterprise versus education, enterprise has a lot of money, but they're really strapped for time. And so it's hard to actually get really good feedback from, from enterprise folks because they're just really busy, right? And, and it's, it's hard. Uh, education, unfortunately, they don't have as much money as they probably should, but they are so willing to give you amazing feedback in, in their time. And so... I love building stuff for the education market, and it's just really, really important to me personally. Uh, I have a lot of teachers from my family, and it's it's really near and dear to my heart. So um, we are uh, really excited. Uh, I haven't really announced this anywhere before, but we're going to be building a version of Whiteboard for education. Um, and so you're going to see some news uh, coming out from us um, soon about that. I can't really say a ton more. But what we wanted to do today was at least give you a glimpse into how you can see the whiteboard being used in education today. Um, and then there's going to be a lot more stuff coming down the pipe that will uh, make it even more clear. In this example, what we're highlighting here is a couple of things. So the idea here is that this is a group project that a teacher has given their class. And it is around this idea of create your own fish. So it's a, it's a creative kind of design project in some sense. But you can imagine the teacher has been teaching about marine biology, for example, or anatomy of a fish, right? And so they're learning about these different components that would go into a project like this. So there can be curriculum in the background. And then as uh, as March maybe pans across the canvas here, because he's the one doing the screen sharing, um, you'll see that the teacher gave some requirements and says, hey, the fish must have these things, uh, gills, jaws, scales, a backbone, uh, lay, it must lay eggs, cold-blooded, et cetera, and then give it a name. And so they go, okay, that's good. We have that information. So the teacher was able to kind of frame the problem space for the kids. And then on this exact same place, right, on the same whiteboard, uh, because it is an infinite canvas, if we zoom out and then move to the right a little bit, you'll see in week one of the project, the kids were each able to sketch out their own ideas. So let their mind run free. What do you think the fish should be like? And they might be inspired by each other or they may do it at different times. It doesn't really matter in this instance. Um, but the point is that each individual is able to have their voice heard, which is a really important component in education. And so you see the different ideas and the visual nature of the kids are very different. Uh, everyone has their own style, their own way of thinking and their own ingenuity and creativity. And so if we zoom out now to go over to another week, so if we uh, just zoom out a little bit more to see the weeks here. So you can see week two is all about working together. So now the kids are pulling the three ideas that were very different and disparate and, and uh, separate in the first week and merging them into one unique fish. Um, and so they're trying to you know brainstorm on different names and how can we pull our ideas together and they're annotating on each other's content and they're really starting to make one cool creative new idea out of many. Um, and then if we scroll over to the right again, uh, again, using the same kind of infinite canvas that we have here, what's really cool is the teacher can then really just copy paste what the kids did the week before and make a whole new area, which is the feedback channel. And so the teacher is able to come in here and in red ink, give a bunch of great feedback. You know, did you forget gills maybe? Are these scales? I'm not sure. Uh, they're able to even just say great collaboration if they're doing a great job. 
And then in uh, the final week here, you're actually able to see the final project, right? What did the kids take the feedback? How did they iterate, which is such an important component of the creative process is iteration, right? It's taking ideas, getting feedback, creating another version, uh, making it better. And so the whiteboard is, is all about that. Um, whether it's in real time or not, like this could have been a project over many weeks, as we showed here in four weeks, or we could have done this all in one hour together if we were <laughs> the class that was a little behind, right? If they <laughs> maybe weren't so organized and they had to do it the night before. Um, but it doesn't matter. And, and the point here is that the teacher is able to give uh, the final grade on the project. The last part here, and this is one thing that I, I like to call out when we show this example that is really, I think, unique and, and powerful, is that so often we forget um, about how people work and we focus only on the, the end result. And what we have seen through our research is how people work oftentimes matters more than the, the results that they produce. Because if somebody's doing the right types of actions, you can get the right results eventually. It's just about tweaking it. But if they're going about it the wrong way, you'll never get to the right end result. And so if March now zooms way out, what you'll see, because again, it's an infinite canvas, is the teacher could come into this board at the end of the project and they could look at every step in totality and see at a really high level, okay, let me see where did it seem that this project broke down, right? This is not spread across multiple assignments that were handed in, multiple pieces of paper, multiple whiteboards that were erased and never seen again, right? Like this is all in one place. And why that matters to a teacher in this example is that they can start to see all the ways the students were working and not just the end result, not just the finished product, but they were actually able to almost feel like they went into the, the little breakout room or into one of the kids' houses, <laughs> not to get creepy, but, uh, but imagine being able to look in as a teacher and see how your students were working all throughout the four weeks of the project. That's a, that's a level of view into the, into the child's mind that they or into the interworkings of their, their group that is really hard to get otherwise. Um, and so to see it all in one place like this is, is really powerful to people. Um, so this is just one small example of kind of a group project scenario uh, for the whiteboard in the education space. What's cool about this scenario, just to wrap up, if we have a lot of enterprise folks listening as well, I'm sure you can imagine the exact same scenario in your workplace, right? A multi-week big project that has creative problem solving involved that you need to whiteboard out ideas for. And then you need to bring in management uh, throughout the process to get feedback and to review and to get approvals. So it's all the same kind of thing, right? And so that's why the whiteboard is so powerful, again, because it's also flexible. It, it meets everyone's needs um, because it's so it's so basic in some ways, but then it's really powerful when you need it to be. One thing that uh, we're inspired by uh, from teachers all the time, and it's a value that, that we share with them here at Microsoft, is about inclusion. And mm -hmm. we want to make sure that no one is excluded from using our products. And Whiteboard's no exception. And so we talked a little bit about, you know, one of the nice things about our product is that you can do real-time collaboration from anywhere in the world on any device you might want to use. Um, and so that we, we want to make sure we're inclusive from that point of view. But also from an accessibility point of view, there's many people with various different disabilities around the world. And we want to make sure they're not excluded too. And this is crucial in education to make sure that no child uh, is unable to participate in the classroom activity. And so we're continuing to work with a lot of teachers and accessibility groups to make sure that we're doing a good job. And it's particularly uh, uh, sort of challenging on a whiteboard product because there's not a lot of structure to base things off. So one, our app is uh, completely compliant with um, the the narrator function in Windows and the voiceover function on iOS devices um, and other screen readers. Uh, and also, if you uh, switch uh, your computer into a high contrast mode, which a lot of people with low visibility uh, will do, our app, including all the ink, will be will remain visible. Um, one thing that you can also do is that you can select uh, these things and label them. And so. Uh, so if I wanted to select this text, I can do that. And I get a little option here, this little speech bubble, and it brings up this alternative text. So I might say week one uh, ideas. And then uh, now if anyone comes with a screen reader, it'll actually un understand what that says in that group of ink and it'll say week one ideas. One of the things that we're working on that will come in a little bit later is being able to automatically recognize the handwriting and turn it into text, automatically recognize images and be able to put this, uh, this text in so that every element of the board can be read out by a narrator or screen reader and therefore mm. someone can uh, understand and interact with that board even if uh, they have a disability such as lower no vision. That's that's huge. I mean that that takes it to that next. Uh, yeah, that's great. 
to be able to bring that and make it accessible to all. Uh, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, that's definitely one of the underlying principles of what we're trying to build. Okay. So those are the, those are the major scenarios we wanted to show everyone this morning. Um, there's a lot more coming, as we said, uh, particularly around <clears throat> intelligence and adding some structure around uh, these so that you don't feel like you're starting with a blank canvas all the time, if that's uh, a little bit intimidating to you. And that may sound familiar. Remember I said at the earlier part of the show that the big thing we're trying to accomplish with the Whiteboard app is to make it feel inviting, not intimidating, um, and let your ideas really come to life on the canvas. So uh, yeah, lots more to come for us. We're, we're, the one thing I'll say, if you're listening and you're hearing this for the first time, we're very new. We're the new kid on the block. We're the baby mm -hmm. in the house of office. And so um, if you have feature requests or ideas, please uh, hit that feedback button in the, in the Windows 10 app or go to whiteboard.uservoice.com uh, to submit feedback on any of our platforms that we're on, iOS, web right now, and the Windows 10 app. And, uh, and we're listening. I'm highly engaged, as I know Daryl and y'all know and uh, on Twitter. Um, so I uh, am all over the social uh, network area for that and also on Reddit and where else, YouTube and everywhere you could possibly imagine. So feel free to hit me up, Ian McAttell, on the socials. Um, we are listening and we really want to hear feedback and how people are using it too. So not just your feature ideas, but if you have a really cool use case, um, and you feel comfortable like taking a screenshot and sending it to us or posting it on social or whatever and sharing with us and other other people um, that is really powerful for us so yeah that's that's what I was gonna say you know uh, as we you know start to wrap up uh, what is the call to action so that sounds like you know you want to hear you want to see what's uh, what people are doing and you know providing that so that you can continue to improve uh, the app you know for everyone right a trillion percent. Uh, that is yep. one of the most valuable things people can do right now for us is show us how you're using your your boards, right? If you okay. think you have a cool use case, um, that's really powerful for us. And then uh, I know there was a question about um, in the chat about colors and thicknesses and things like that. Uh, that was one of the top uh, feature uh, kind of feedback things that we've heard in early testing. And so that is on its way. Um, I don't want to share all the details just yet, but don't worry. We are all over that one. Uh, so you'll have more flexibility to be creative in the app uh, over time. But yeah, the big call to action is um, go to whiteboard.microsoft.com, uh, uh, download the app on Windows 10, iOS. Uh, if you're a commercial user, you can get the web app going. Uh, try it out with a group of people. So the, the one big thing I, I tell everyone, if you do play with the app, is it will feel 10 times more amazing at, at a minimum if you try it with at least one other person. So uh, get a buddy, get a coworker, get a friend, get a student or a teacher, it doesn't, doesn't matter the, the relationship, uh, drag your significant other onto it, whatever you need to do. <laughs> uh, but test it out with a couple people at least and it will, it will really become evident to you why this is a powerful app. And, hey, um, uh, for, uh, just ahead. as a quick question, so um, checking in with Louisa, we've been seeing um, a panning view of the whiteboard and, um, and notes that you've been creating. How have you found it to be uh, in terms of um, creating these these sketch notes from from the whiteboard. So first thing first, I app whiteboard. Um, so it's absolutely amazing for me. So it's so basic, and I I, I totally can focus on what I want to draw and focus on my ideas and focus on your ideas and uh, about the process of collaborating and not being distracted. Uh, by all those buttons and functions and features. And um, it's new to me, but uh, I, I totally love it. You might notice there too, I've, I've added to um, some of your sketch notes as well. So I'd done that. Yeah. Um, I'd done that from, um, from basically the, uh, let's click this over here. Just hold this up. So this is just for the online audience. Um, you can see it on the iPad. So that's how I got the picture in nice and quick. Um, oh, I love it. Other things as well. So it's, uh, yeah, definitely a, a, another example of the, the collaborative aspect of, of working on, on Whiteboard. Louisa and I created some sketch notes together. Yeah, for Sam. <laughs> and, and it so, was great. <laughs> so, uh, to Ian's point oh. about collaboration, it really brings the app to life, which is why, uh, even though we have very few uh, sort of buttons and controls in the app on purpose, the one that is sort of bright blue in the top right hand corner is the 
is the icon to share. And so you can click on it mm. um, and you'll you'll see who currently has um, access to the board. Uh, and you can write or type the name of people and it will you can either just uh, type in a whole email address of anybody or you can uh, start typing and it will suggest names of people who are in the same Office 365 tenant that you're in. So if I were to start typing a name, uh, it will suggest other people who's... Uh, uh, who's maybe uh, in the Laura, tenant. L-O-R-A. Uh, there we go. Yes, because we Dan and Dan, Daryl are probably the only two Ds, and okay. so it'll suggest other people um, who are in the same tenant, and you can just click it, and they will get an email with the link to the board, uh, and away they go. So we've got we've got that ability to share within an organization or in the same tenant, um, <laughs> and if people want to currently just work with anyone, um, you can use Microsoft accounts. Yeah, that's right. So uh, anyone with a Microsoft account can collaborate with anyone else with a Microsoft account. And so a Microsoft account is like an Outlook.com or a Hotmail.com or an Xbox.com address. Um, and you can do that. We will have the ability for people in different O365 tenants to be able to like, collaborate with each other. That That isn't in the app, but it's uh, it's coming soon. We know that that's something that customers have asked for. Um, so yeah, so there's just watch this space. There's a, a lot more richness and capabilities coming in the next few months. Uh, and actually, it would be great if we got together again and maybe you know six months or a year, we could do a quick update on all the things that have happened, what we've learned from our customers, and uh, what new capabilities are available. Yeah, that'd be. Great. And and I think one thing, uh, could you throw in your uh, Twitter account on the in the chat room for those that uh, oh, sure. would like to ask questions after the event? That'd be great. Yeah, and I will also throw it on the whiteboard for anyone who's, oh, cool. uh, who's seeing it there. <laughs> yeah, it's just at Ian Mikatel, I-A-N-M-I-K-U-T-E-L, and uh, March is typing his into a beautiful sticky note. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys, for uh, having us on today. We really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Very That's much. brilliant, and um, thank you for everyone joining us in the in the um, live chat as well. So um, we did peek at a, quite a number of uh, viewers there, and um, thanks for all your questions in there. Um, do do follow up. Um, we'll have a blog post as well, sort of pulling together some of the the summary of what's been talked about and some of the uh, the online resources and places to give feedback, just so that it's there and easy to find. Um, but yeah, I'll just leave that there just a bit longer. So we've got at March and at Ian Mikatel and March is having some problems typing at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you're better with a pen actually, March. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I agree. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thanks guys. All right. Thank so yeah, you. that's, that was, uh, regarding 365 and thanks everyone for joining on the, on the team and, and thanks Microsoft for, for coming along and, and demonstrating. We will definitely check in with you in a few months time or if you, uh, stick your hand up and say, Hey, Hey, we've got something new to show you guys. And uh, we welcome you back on the show. Fantastic. Cool. Thanks again. All right. Bye. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye.